Welcome to the Celebrate Brave podcast. I'm Nicole Church Steinbach, your host and the international bravery coach for women in tech. I serve women all over the world to earn more money, create more opportunities, and thrive in the tech industry because tech needs all of us. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, brave people, and welcome to this episode. Now, I'm going to give you a heads up that I get real passionate in this one, so be ready for that. Real passionate. And the other heads up is that this topic is really targeted specifically for people who are already senior in their careers. So I'm talking about people with seven plus sometimes five plus years of experience, people who are carrying the responsibility and the accountability for other people's careers. So they're in management or they are in project leadership roles. However, having said that and created the context, if that's not you yet and you want it to be you, stick around because the faster you can get this part right, the faster you can build the habit I'm going to be talking about, the better off you're going to be. So what is the topic? The topic is, should you wish not just to have a senior career, but you wish to enjoy it, dare I say thrive in it, if you wish to continue growing in your career, there's a lot of things that you have got to do. You've got to shift how you think, because it's no longer just your career. It's also other people's careers. You've got to shift how you network, how you describe yourself, how you show up, the presencing that you have. There's a lot of other things, the way that your compensation is set up, (laughs) how you ask for things, how you answer things, how you say yes, how you say no, like all of these things. There are so many things that you need to shift. And I'm positive that you are like, "Mm -hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When I went from a consultant to a senior consultant, stuff had to change, 100%. When I got into being a director, things had to change. When it went from being a director to senior director, things had to change. I had to change. I had to change. I had to become the person in that role with those responsibilities, with that clarity, with the action and the learning and the experience of that type of role. And this is the one we're talking about today, accountability, habits, mindset, relationships, et cetera, inside of a senior career so that you continue to grow and that you enjoy it. Once again, dare I say you thrive in it. There is a lie that almost all of us believe men and women. And I know this from my male clients. I know this from my female clients. It is a lie that we believe in all over the world. It is a lie you need to recognize, and then you need to work to dismantle. That lie is that you are invested in by your employer and on the rare occasion when that you invest in yourself, it's because things are really bad. I'm going to say it again. You are invested in by your employer, your employer invests in you so that you succeed, continue to grow, and dare I say it, thrive in your senior to executive career. And the only time that you invest in yourself is when things are really bad, when you are unexpectedly unemployed, when you are passed over for promotion the third time, when you are being sexually harassed when you're being bullied or mobbed. So bullying is what certain parts of the world call it. Mobbing is what other parts of the world call it. Both of it is crap. Only when things are bad do you invest in yourself. And the rest of the time, the majority of the time, your employer invests in you. This is a lie. The faster that you acknowledge 
you internalize and then you change towards actual truth, the more you're going to enjoy your career and continue to grow. Let me step back for just a second and share the context of this. There's a couple of different contexts. First on the meta level, one in three women in technology are current reflecting on leaving the industry. That's a damn shame. That is a damn shame. We need more women, not less women. So that's a meta level. Number two, to quote Zoe, the tech industry is barbaric. Less than 2% of the investment in the world goes to women all over the world. That's disgusting. So we're thinking of leaving. Women in tech are thinking of leaving. And we are being pushed out. Let's be real. We can look at the executive levels, how many women crash and burn. We can talk about there's huge legal action against a female founder right now who has done harm for sure in the United States. However, we also know many male founders who have done a lot of harm. There's not legal action against them. Hmm, curiouser and curiouser. Another piece of the context for this is that as I have been introduced, and thank you everyone for the referrals, thank you everyone for inviting me to your teams and your organizations and your companies, like I'm super, super grateful. I'm so grateful. And as I've been introduced to more and more women who are okay in their career, who aren't suffering in their career, They are genuinely lost about why the company and their senior, excuse me, I forgot to say that they're senior, right? They're not happy, but they're not unhappy and they're senior. The more lost they are that the company is not investing in them. Well, but they got the boot camp and they got the onboarding and they got the foundational certifications and now they want to go further and the company's not investing in them. That's so strange. But also senior women who have other life obligations. I'm going to just take myself as an example, right? I have a family. (laughs) I signed up for another half marathon. I have hobbies. I have friends. I have a career. I have all this stuff. Why is my career progressing? I do a good job. I keep my head down. I keep my chin down and I do a good job. I mean, this is literally what I said for a while before this lie got pointed out to me and I did the work to change so that I could move towards the truth. So I'm having more and more of these conversations and women are quietly unhappy. They've been passed over once where there's not been an investment in them once. It's also been 2020 and 2021 where the majority of the quote unquote other responsibilities have fallen primarily on female shoulders, on women's shoulders. And then they don't invest in themselves. They don't do therapy. They don't do coaching. They don't even join the women's group or the equity group where they're working. They don't invest in themselves. They don't get certifications because they'd have to pay for it. They don't figure out a mentoring because that's too much time. They don't know how to do most of the sponsorship stuff. They think that they need to go to some sort of educational program to figure out purchasing, to figure out leadership, to figure out paper management for their employees. But the company's not investing in them and they're quietly unhappy. Their career is going. Flat out, it's been so frustrating to see so many amazing women over the past, let's say, eight months who need to invest in themselves before it gets crappy, but they're so blinded by the lie. They're so blinded by the lie. And then the final context of this episode is that this week I attended a very exclusive global networking opportunity for women in technology 
who were in the director level and above from all over the world. I mean, people woke up at like three in the morning to attend this thing. There were probably, I don't know, I'm going to say about 300, 350 of us. Again, the most junior was a director and above, and it was by invitation and referral only. The organizers, they set the context, and then we had the opportunity to self-assign into areas of interest. I'm not going into more specifics because it was a relatively confidential affair, and I deeply respect the vulnerability that was shared inside of this. So I self-selected into a group, and there was probably about 20 of us there. We started off, of course, with the small talk. and. Someone asked a question about RSUs and executive pay, and somebody else mentioned something about getting sponsorship in in the C-level of companies with, uh, I think it was 25,000 or more people, right? So like really senior specific conversation. And then one woman raises her hand and she begins to talk and she says, Her first words were, am I the only one? Am I the only one? And then she continued to tell us a story about how she feels lost and underfed. There's an entire episode in Celebrate Brave season one with Nicole who talks about bore out, reimagining women in STEM. So she's talking about her bore out. She's talking about how no one invests in her anymore when she was junior, this program existed. When she was three to five years, this program existed. This happened at her last employer. So she changed an employer. And is this just how it is when you have a senior level career? When you have a director level career, is this just what it is? First, I want to say that we emphatically told her, you are not alone. (laughs) We have all been there. (laughs) We have all experienced this. We've all experienced a slowdown of our career, a lack of investment, a lack of all kinds of stuff. So no, you're not alone. And then some of us said, (laughs) some of us said that is common, but it's not normal. It's incredibly common for senior careers to stall, to get boring, for a company to choose not to invest in you anymore. And that's very common and it is absolutely not normal. Thankfully, there was another woman who spoke up first, extremely senior at a brand we all know. And she said, this is my lived experience. The number one thing you have to do is change your assumptions. She shared about how what made you successful three years ago is not going to make you successful now. She shared her own story of how she had a career slowdown. She was playing with the idea of quitting, period. It was so awful and she has all these interests and blah, blah, blah. So she shared her whole story and She wrapped it up by saying, it's common. It's not normal. No, you're not alone. And the only person who can solve it is you. And that's when I swooped in and I shared the following. (laughs) We believe a lie, men and women in tech, not in tech, everywhere in the world. We believe a lie. We believe a lie that corporations will invest in us, that we just do our jobs. We do a really good job. Perhaps we do a little bit of branding for ourselves, but they're going to invest in us for our skills, for our interests, to keep our minds busy because we're their most expensive resource. So they're going to invest in us. That is a lie. The second part is that we only invest in ourselves when things have gone wrong, when things are crappy, when we're suffering. That is also a lie. The reality is The more senior you become, the more you need to invest in yourself proactively when things are good. And all these eyebrows all over the screen went up really high. 
all over the screen. It was amazing. And women started to say, what does that mean? Invest in yourself. And other women were like, that is the damn truth. (laughs) We had this amazing woman from the South of the United States. She was incredible. And she was just like, that's the damn truth. And she went on to explain how she learned to invest in herself when things were good, how she educates all the people around her. So she is from a very poor area. And during COVID, she actually moved back there. She lived in a high cost area. She moved back there. And now she has this opportunity to show people, this is how you make your leaps. And guess what? It's not waiting for somebody else to invest in you. You have to invest in you. You have to believe in your greater potential in your greater results, in your greater skills. You have to believe. And then you got to put your time, your heart, your energy, and yes, your money behind it. I do not know a successful, thriving executive who invests less than 20% into themselves. I'm talking therapy. I'm talking retreats and times off. I'm talking leadership masterminds, and I am talking personal coaching. The first time I realized that executives in a company that I was consulting in all had $25,000 a year to spend on themselves. And most of them, the good ones invested at least double. Well, my mind was blown because I thought that I had gotten it, but I hadn't gotten it yet. You must shift your mindset. You must shift your habits. Should you wish to not just have a senior director, VP plus career, you have to make this change If you also want to enjoy it, you must invest in yourself when things are good. Invest in yourself when things are growing. Invest in yourself when you are a leading woman in tech. And until you do that, until you make it happen, sadly, you're going to dip in and out of what is common, but not normal. You don't have to be common. You don't have to be normal. You can be extraordinary. You can earn more money. You can create new opportunities. You can thrive as a woman in tech. And to do it, you must invest in yourself. Until next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Celebrate Brave podcast you're ready to build your brave, to live a life you love and create a career that matters to you, reach out. Together, we can spend time one-on-one to explore how I can help you. And until then, share this episode with people in your life people who can join our movement to redefine brave how we identify it, experience it, and celebrate it.